in which our U.S. presence there, we had bases in Saudi Arabia until 2003, uh, but many Muslims considered our presence there blasphemous. Uh, in addition to Saudi Arabia, we had bases in Kuwait, Bahrain, Qatar, Oman, the United Arab Emirates, Turkey, Egypt, Israel, Djibouti, Afghanistan, Pakistan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan, and of course, Iraq. Well, again, why wouldn't they be upset? I mean, there, we have military bases across their entire region. I mean, how would we feel? But I am just not speculating about the reasons for their hatred of us and why they attacked us. There's proof. Osama bin Laden, in his 1996 fatwa, Declaration of War Against the Americans Occupying the Land of Two Holy Places, said, The people of Islam awakened and realized that they are the main target for the aggression of the Zionist Crusaders Alliance. The latest and the greatest of these aggressions incurred by the Muslims since the death of the Prophet is the occupation of the land of the two holy places by the armies of the American Crusaders and their allies talking about bases in Saudi Arabia. The youths hold you responsible for all of the killings and evictions of the Muslims and the violation of the sanctities carried out by your Zionist brothers in Lebanon. You openly supplied them with arms and finance, our aid to Israel. More than 600,000 Iraqi children have died due to lack of food and medicine and as a result of the unjustifiable aggression imposed on Iraq and its nation. The children of Iraq are our children. You, the USA, together with the Saudi regime, are responsible for the shedding of the blood of these innocent children. Due to all of that, whatever treaty you have with, all of our, with our country is now null and void. Now, Osama bin Laden made similar statements in tape releases after 9-11. But where in any of these statements do you hear something about hating our freedoms? I mean, you hear nothing in there about you know, our freedom of opportunity or our freedom of religion, our freedom of speech. Not, freedom is not mentioned once. It's because of the things that we have done to them. So what do we do? What is the answer? Well, it's really simple. End imperial foreign policy. It's as, it's as easy as that. Nation building is immoral and it doesn't work. Uh, it's, it, it blows up in your face what the CIA calls blowback. We have to take the attitude of Ron Paul, take his advice, and think about what it would be like to be, to be treated like those people are treated. Think of what it would be like if Mexico was operating drones across the Rio Grande and launching missiles at our interstates. Think of how you would feel if China was conducting naval exercises off the coast of Florida. Think about what it would feel like if Iran was constructing military bases in California and New York. Think about what it would feel like if North Korea was kidnapping U.S. citizens off the streets, throwing them on planes, and shipping them off to East Asia or South America or wherever else. There's only one answer. End all this now, embrace the foreign policy of the founders, go not in search of monsters to destroy, have entangling alliances with none, and have peace, commerce, and honest friendship with all nations. Thank you. So what is your opinion of all the things we've heard today? What is this leading to in the future? Well, personally, I don't like the way things are going. I don't either. But yeah, what's, I mean, what's the reason? Well, people have asked me what we should do. And I am of the opinion of Ayn Rand uh, that you're not going to be able to do anything until you change the minds of people. And that is what we do here at the foundation. I mean, we're, we're not really a, a policy tank so much. Our idea, is, our, our mission is to change people's minds. We want to influence people. We want to influence Joe Sixpack. And I think until Joe Sixpack cares for his liberties, uh, I don't think we're going to get very far.
that's true. Yeah. This country seems to be totally in oblivious of what's going on. No, I agree. Nobody as cares. As far as spiritual values, you just don't exist in this country. Deep spiritual values. And I'm not talking about religious. Deep spiritual values. Can anybody with any deep spiritual values would not allow this to go on? Yeah, sorry. I, 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 just a comment. The, the, the notion that they hate us because we're free. Um, think about the rationale for why that statement is made. It's because, like, what do you do with that? No, oh, absolutely. A, and, and it leads to enormous frustration. And what do you do with enormous frustration? You lash out. Oh, absolutely. To support a war. If they told the truth, which is they hate us because of our policies, you can do something with that. Change the policies. But that, of course, is not part of the plan. Well, plus, if, if you accept the rationale that they attack us for our freedom, you have to be thinking, these people are insane. Of course we have to go to war with them. I mean, who doesn't like freedom? Uh, so, yeah, I think it, it feeds right into the, into the whole rationale for going to war. You can't answer it. And just one other observation, as you were going through the, what's happened over the last six or seven years, it's just one thing after another. I mean, every single day in the New York Times, which is the paper that I read, it's just like, here it is again. Here's some new outrage. And after a while, you become numb to it. Oh. You know, what do you do? Well, you try it? not to become numb for yeah, one thing. Yeah. You know, people are like, you know, it w wouldn't surprise me at all. I mean, somebody asked you about what's going to happen next. I don't know. Uh, cancel the election, maybe? <laughs> well, hey. Uh, <laughs> wouldn't be the most outrageous thing. Uh, well, speaking of... Uh, of um, one thing after another coming. One of the, the games that Jacob and I play at work, we, we get in at six and we, re we read the newspapers for about two hours in the morning. And on Monday mornings, uh, it is always his fun game to read me the most depressing news that he can find. Uh, so uh, that, that's, our, that's our fun. Yes, sir. Just another comment. We all want to see change. We want people to see the light. I don't think it's going to happen until the government school system is dismantled. Sheldon Richmond's wonderful book. <laughs> Separating school and state. It's that simple. It tells you in there what the purpose of the schools is. The purpose is not to educate the children. So we have a populace today of non-critical thinkers. You can't talk to them about constitutional rights. You can't talk to them about the balance of trade. You can't talk to them about what's going on now, because they, they haven't been trained to think critically. Well, I, I have to say, uh, in terms of public schooling, uh, the most incisive and intelligent children I've come across are homeschool children. <laughs> uh, our, uh, our compatriot, Scott McPherson, and his wife, Charlotte, uh, with, he's a contributor to Freedom Daily, and they actually have their two children here today, uh, Megan and Lysander. I highly recommend everybody talk to them. Uh, some of the most intelligent children you've ever read, and I don't know that they've ever seen the inside of a public school before. So, uh, yeah, highly recommend him to uh, To comment further about them hating us for our freedoms, if that was the real rationale, I would think Hong Kong, Switzerland, and Singapore would be in flames, too. Oh, no. <laughs> Uh, at the beginning of your talk, you were mentioning some catchphrases, and I remembered most of them. The one, what did you say, spider holes? Spider holes. Spider, I guess That's I, where we found Saddam Hussein when we finally captured him. <laughs> uh, do you think one of the reasons for that nonsensical idea that they hate us because of our freedom was to justify Bush and his gang as they consistently totally dismantle our freedoms? <laughs> 